Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Monday, December 23rd, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't as this is a general reading. Yes, also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So this just because this is dated for the 23rd of December does not mean it has to resonate on that day. This can resonate for you at any moment in your life. Yes. However, if you are drawn to it, then it's most likely going to have, you're most likely going to be able to take something away from it. Yeah. I would always encourage um, if you feel so inclined to uh, maybe check back at another time, especially if something didn't really resonate right away or you didn't quite get it, um, just let it sink in or take some time away from it, come back to it, and maybe, just maybe, it'll make a little more sense at that time, yeah? Um, just a little bit of a disclaimer here. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys can hear it, but they are hard at work across the street, jackhammering like crazy, um, working on that foundation for building 144, so, um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Although, actually, I, I don't know why I should be apologizing for it. I have nothing to do with it. I can't, I can't do anything about it. Um, and they start here, um, people start rolling up at like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., they are hard at work, so really can't escape it. <laughs> Anyway, it's not, and I'm going to be honest, it's not like I would really want to escape it. You know, the symbolism of the fact that not only that I live across the street from, you know, 144, which, okay, is not that big of a deal, but at the same time, like me being a, like a, you know, a bit of a twin flame guide and being on this twin flame journey and all that, you mean, you can't, you can't escape the symbolism there. I mean, that's just like, it's a little too crazy. And the fact that, you know, they're rebuilding the building now and they started um, they broke ground, like I said, during the Twin Flame reading um, that I released on Saturday this past weekend. Um, and actually, some of you, a lot of you mentioned that I, I mentioned it on that day. I just didn't quite remember. Um, I actually thought I had forgotten to mention, mention it. But they broke ground to build the foundation on November 11th, 11-11. Guys, I mean, that the, the synchronicities are inescapable. <laughs> so I'm actually quite happy that they're doing that that does not bother me at all so hopefully it doesn't bother you guys and i'm really not sure how much of it you can actually hear because i listened back to some of the videos and it's not all that loud i mean i see it being picked up um on the microphone but it's it's very it's very small anyway um speaking of twin flame reading if you haven't had a chance to check out the twin flame reading the mirror reading that i did for this month please go ahead and check that out um it's titled the best reading to date because it absolutely was it, it i mean it was a really great reading a lot of really awesome things came through um i'm i was very very happy to have done it i will say that i have made a, a big shift for myself um uh, within myself in terms of this whole twin flame situation um i've <laughs> Okay, fine, I'll say it. I'm not so mad at my masculine anymore. <laughs> at my divine masculine anymore. It really is not an issue any longer. Um, I've made a lot of peace with the situation. And so uh, I'm not looking to do twin flame readings daily here on Morning Coffee. Morning Coffee is meant to be... Um, Morning Coffee is meant to be general readings for everybody. However, if twin flame situations come out, then they come out. If there's a narrative that I can pick from whatever is coming through on the cards, I'll go in that direction, okay? This is for everyone, but twin flame situations are gonna come up. Also, I'm on the journey myself, so, and I often resonate with these readings, and I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm part of the collective like you guys, so I'm just gonna call a spade a spade when I see a spade, you know what I mean? Um, but if you haven't checked out that reading, please go ahead and do so. It's really freaking awesome. And just for future reference, I am looking to do monthly mirror readings just because I don't want to oversaturate this, oversaturate the channel with twin flame messages and all that stuff. It really only, it's really only necessary once a month just to see where the twins are, just to see where the masculine and feminine collective is in terms of the, where they are um, individually on the journey and how they may be mirroring each other, okay? And if you would like to get a Twin Flame reading yourself, please go ahead and email me. I would be very, very happy to do one for you, yeah? 
All right, kids, let's get into the reading or the message for today. So I have some pre-shuffle energy here for you. As I was channeling, as I was channeling and as I was shuffling the cards, um, I'm seeing yellow, but it's yellow and green. Okay. It did start out as yellow, but then spirit was saying to me, it's actually, it is uh, a combination of yellow and green. We are in the process. Many of us are in the process of waking up from the matrix or at least, um, realigning our willpower, getting some of the going through yes thank you spirit going through a bit of an ego death if you want to call it that an ego dissolution if you want to go call it that or i think what the best way to say it is um integrating going through an integration process like literally pulling the ego back and saying okay all right okay you've you've had your fun now let's let's pull it back in and let's become part of the collective again let's 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 i mean you 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 really weren't supposed to be driving the ship anyway but you know what we let you run amok we let you have a good time okay cool but now it's time to get back to business and start to get to the truth of the matter because really the higher self is in control here okay and that might be something that you know um might be difficult for you to accept um because you might be feeling like you're giving a little bit of your power away but that's your ego you're not giving your power away your higher self is you okay so you're not really giving any of your power away you're actually allowing more of your own power to lead the way all right so getting into the pre-shuffle here we have the one card in this deck that to me depicts um waking up from the matrix perfectly and it's the moon but it's this side of the moon where we have who the, a figure who is the this is actually the high priestess here okay she's coming to you she's coming for you naked in her purity in her purity in her truth uh, in spiritual reality and spiritual truth being naked represents being fully yourself without any sort of conditions without any sort of sort of programming without any clothes um you know this is purely you in your purest highest form right but this is the high priestess and she brings to you a choice and you can see this as um morpheus giving neo in the matrix the choice of whether to take the red or the blue pill so you have now i don't i don't i'm sorry guys i don't quite remember which pill is which is it the red pill no the red pill whatever whatever it doesn't matter here <laughs> one pill wakes you up one pill keeps you asleep so this one here this one this one white orb in her hand this would be the one that wakes you up this bowl of green goo i guess we could call it is that which will keep you asleep this actually is the toxicity it, it, it looks really quite toxic but this is the purity and this purity here is going to wake you up and you have these columns here that in which you see are um well towers i guess you could call it you see that they're hollow on this side of the card you have these towers here in which it looks like a structure is standing right but that's illusionary you see here with the high priestess this this is actually hollow all right there is not there is no substance there is no there's nothing in there okay and what was once big this big big almost scary type moon looking here is now eclipsed here okay i don't know what this constellation is Okay, Spirit is saying I should look that up. All right, give me a second. Um, let's see. No, that's the sun. The moon. Let's see. The moon has passed between the earth and the sun. Putting, putting in this. Okay, the moon has passed between the earth and the sun, putting the sun into full eclipse. The, di the day sky fills with stars. Near the horizon, ah, the constellation of Cancer is seen. It seems to float above the head of the woman rising from the water just as the crab rose on the other side of the card. The moon towers are shown to be open at the back as the tower card, but there is no rubble, no sense of destruction here. These towers were intentionally built to both reveal and conceal. One side open, one side closed. The imagination has free flow in the place of dreams and visions. So that's the, cancel that's the constellation of cancer right there okay in your overall energy you have the world with the eight of pentacles on the other side of the deck and as i started the pre-shuffle and i was channeling the energies and i saw that yellow color mixed with green 
I was and and I started shuffling and the eight of pentacles actually caught my eye but it wasn't this side of the card it was the other side of the card but that made a lot of sense with the yellow energy the yellow energy is the energy of the solar plexus and that is the willpower that is your drive that is your action that is you know that is the work that you that that is from where you generate or you push forward you get the, the energy to work to to produce to create to to take action yes um so what this feels like here is action is being taken and i i really feel like this is physical conscious action is being taken in order to close out some cycles with the world here to prepare for shifting out of the matrix i guess we could call it you know what i mean um in, in waking up um there also is an element of maybe working with your inner child here um for sure for some of you you're actually preparing for future generations i would say but the thing the biggest thing is i really feel like now that the ego is starting to subside the ego is starting to be integrated back in into the you know the greater whole of you whatnot whatever um your inner child is now in a place to really lead the way to really come forward okay which is really great is really really great I'm getting a sense that whatever it is you're building here, I'm really feeling like your inner child or some sort of sense of innocence is really coaching you, you being this adult here, even though it's a man, it doesn't matter. Um, you being this adult that's actually doing the physical work, I really see this child or this innocence um, is coaching you on how to build or what to strive for i heard um what actions to take which way to which direction to move in that kind of energy yes excellent guys this is really beautiful energy oh i do want to say very happy hanukkah to those of you that have started your celebrations um i believe um, I'm not quite sure on which day officially was the first day of Hanukkah, what if it was the 21st or the 22nd, um, especially like, cause it doesn't, it, it, I think it feel, it falls on the, the shortest day of the year, which is the solstice here in the East coast, the solstice was the 21st, but I think even on the West coast of the United States, it was the 22nd or something like that. But I know there was, there was a difference in, you know, depending on where you are in the world, the solstice, the solstice was on a different day, but either way, very happy Hanukkah to all of you that, that celebrate. Yes? Excellent. Okay. So, with that said, let me give this one more shuffle. And then, we will get started. Yeah? Okay. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, December 23rd, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm really seeing the, 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 the green of the heart chakra is really prominent right now. So definitely, we're definitely dealing or working with some heart chakra activations. Heart chakras are really like, I want to say blown wide open at this point. And it's not even a situation in which, oh no, I'm super vulnerable now. It's like, oh no, I can love now. I feel now. I appreciate now. I'm 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 gra I'm grateful. I, ha I have so much gratitude. I have so much love to give. I I've never really felt this way before. This is this is amazing. What why have I why have I been so closed off to this for such a long time? Mm, but spirit is saying, I mean, that's learning from the contrast, guys. If you weren't closed off to it, if you had never really experienced this before, would you would you appreciate it this much now that you do? Boop boop. <laughs> All right, let's gonna give this three shuffles here. One for our Monday, December twenty third, twenty nineteen. Two. And three. 
All right. Here we go, guys. Let's see what we've got. Eyes are closed, so I cannot see this one. Okay. One more shuffle. We're going to do one more pass. And then ooh, we'll talk about this. This one. This one too, okay. And scene, all right. All right, overall, oh, overall energy is the two of cups. The two of cups, but with, okay, but don't freak out. It is the seven of cups on the other side, okay. And it's not the best side of the seven of cups, but wait, there's more. So, so don't worry about it, okay? We do have the five of pentacles, which is in reverse. That is excellent. We have the devil, and it's the backside of the devil. That is excellent. We have the star, the high priestess, strength, four of swords, six of pentacles, four of cups. Interesting. That four of cups energy feels a little out of place. However, it's giving me, actually, no, when you put it there, it doesn't feel out of place because the energy that I'm getting from this Four of Cups is like the ships have sailed. And I think this is a realization for yourself that whatever was toxic in the past for you, that's over. That ship has sailed. And there, actually, I am getting a little bit of remorse, a little bit of grieving here with this energy. And it's really kind of an energy of um, you needing to grieve for the part of your life a cycle in your life that is coming to a close it's literally okay what i'm seeing here especially you know five of pentacles is in reverse the devil is his back is turned okay and with this side of the devil it's as if you can escape him now you can escape his trickery he's not he's not looking anymore he's not paying attention so you could sneak away right five of pentacles in reverse is an energy of what i'm really feeling here is you knowing your worth and not letting the devil take you down any longer knowing exactly what it is the, the, what exactly the value that you hold recognizing that you are worthy and so then when we get to this four of cups energy here it's like you're standing on the shore having made the decision to leave all the toxicity behind the narcissistic toxic whatever patriarchal cycles i don't know what however you resonate with it you're you've chosen to leave it behind to remove yourself from the situation and that circumstance and so now you're standing on the shore just watching watching that ship sail away a little bit of remorse a little bit of grieving there could be some nostalgia you could be you know thinking back on all the actual fun times that you did have because i'm not saying that it, it was all terrible you know, you did enjoy yourself at certain moments, and I'm pretty sure there were probably some really epic moments that you really don't ever want to forget. And I'm, ne I'm never going to be the person to sit here and say to you that you need to completely forget all of that. No, if you enjoyed yourself, if you had a good time at various moments, please hold on to those memories, okay? But there's definitely a sense of maturity here that's saying, all right, but you know what? That phase in my life is done. Because to be quite honest, a lot of what I dealt with in that phase of my life was coming from a place of me feeling lack, me feeling not good enough, me trying to fit in even. That's the narrative I'm picking up here with this. This is a really good energy. Okay, this is beautiful. So then here we go. Um, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. We'll get there in a second. Cause I was just, I was just thinking, but Eric, wait, we have all this great energy, but then there's still that one seven of cups that's under there. Okay. We'll get to that in a second. Don't worry. It's really not as bad as you might think. Okay. You have the star, the high priestess strength, and you have the four of swords and the six of pentacles, but I will get to this in a second. I want to talk about this first, the star, the high priestess and the six of pentacles. So now you're moving on you're on a you're on a brand new journey your life is taking a different turn and no it's not a turn for the worst it might have been an unexpected turn but it's an unexpected turn just because your ego never saw it coming however that higher self of yours was preparing for it the whole time knew exactly what was going on actually kind of designed it right 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're you have the secrets being revealed, working directly with the high priestess. That's what I see here with this side of the card. Having you know going you you, you seeing behind her. Okay. Whereas before she might have been like this. Um, coming to you with secrets in hand, with knowledge, with wisdom for you to learn and understand. Well, now it's like you've been initiated, not indoctrinated, initiated. Yes, you've been initiated. So now you get the keys to the universe here. Boop, -de boop, 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 right? Now I also kind of really feel like this is an energy of you working hand in hand, working in tandem with the high priestess, or in other words, in this case, the universe, moving towards wish fulfillment, also moving towards healing, having take having um tamed the beast within, I guess you could say. In this in, in this card here, this individual is the the Empress, right? Who's kind of like taming this beast. But the, the strength card here is self-control wisdom understanding your true nature and bringing and, and 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 it not and taming it in the sense that you're not like whipping it into shape i guess maybe you are but it's more gentle than that it's more an energy of understanding yourself understanding your true nature and loving loving yourself un unconditionally and compassionately extremely compassionately which keeps this beast from lashing out any longer and the only reason that beast within you was lashing out, the only reason that there was basically a monster within you was because that monster just wanted to be loved and understood, recognized for what it truly is, not what maybe the Hierophant energy wanted it to be, tried to control it or conform it into being. The High Priestess liberated that, pre that part of you by showing you just how lovable you are, by showing you that you are acceptable as you truly are look at that look at that you guys five of pentacles in reverse with the devil and his back is turned you are lovable you are acceptable exactly as you are and i don't even want to say it that way i want to say you are acceptable exactly the way you were created and this is what that high priestess is showing you this is what that high priestess has revealed to you. That's the big bad secret. That you are lovable and acceptable the way you were created. Not the way the rest of the world thinks you should be. Therefore, you've got this deep sense of healing with the star. And also wish fulfillment. Okay, and I will show you why in a moment. So, moving forward here, we have the Four of Swords, which is a really, I mean, this side of the card is really quite perfect because look at all that shit that's burning down in the background. Okay, there's a wildfire going on back there. Come on, focus you. You see that? You see that fire back there? And that dude's just sitting there like, yeah, all right, well, we're just going to let it burn because it needed to grow anyway. Okay, as, as, the cycle is completing for yourself as you are making this transition okay because with this world energy the world energy that was um in the pre-shuffle it was the side of the card in which you see somebody you see the back side of the woman that's within that wreath or that portal and that can be seen as actively going through the portal um and sometimes you know that side of the world can indicate someone trying to rush the situation i don't get that here especially now with this four of swords here what i'm getting is as this cycle is completing for you as you know this fire is raging to you know um i'm very much seeing it as um you know how deserts have wildfires and that like basically primes the landscape for the new growth to come through that's what i'm seeing with this fire of the four of swords but as you're sitting back and allowing the fire to burn it's like you're contemplating ways to be reciprocal you're contemplating ways to have balanced and reciprocal relationships and there could be one specific relationship in question here and that's what brings us to the two of cups with the seven of cups now first and foremost before we get into what everybody really well what most of us really want to hear about this two of cups is first and foremost indicative of the union between masculine and feminine within okay but then that doesn't that does extend to counterparts in the external and that's where this seven of cups comes into play 
it's like, holy shit, what do I do now? How do I get to this person? How do I talk to this person? There's so much around me that's just has been so toxic and narcissistic and egotistical and just awful. Um, but this is kind of an illusion, you guys. I really feel like you are allowing yourself to get lost in the sauce. What do I mean lost in the sauce? No, I mean, I don't really think that maybe you're trying to um, numb some of the pain by drinking so much, but that's not what I mean. That's really not what I mean. Getting lost in the sauce in this case is getting lost in all of the extra shit from the past, but that's just it. It's the past. Okay. And as, and it's illusionary. Thank you, spirit. They just said it's illusionary. Okay. It was a moment in time in which you needed to experience it to help you break free from it. All right. But that's also what's being released here with this four of swords energy. So relax. It's really not as bad as you think. Okay. Give yourself some time to allow this stuff to burn away, to allow this stuff to be released from your life. You don't have to rush this situation. The other thing about this Two of Cups here, with it being the daytime scene, is conscious awareness of a divine counterpart situation. And I truly feel that for most of you, for some of whomever, there are some of you out there that are going to resonate with this. I'm not going to go so far and say that it's everybody. But I feel for some of you, at least, that both of you are very, very aware of each other, and both of you love each other very, 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 very much. And both of you would want, would want nothing more than to just put all this shit behind, like forget all this, and just come together already. But again, we cannot rush this. There are still some things that need to be ironed out. And the universe has that, has that under control for us, okay? There is in fact divine timing at play here. And all you really need to do is just sink into it. Just sink into divine timing. Allow yourself to sink into that. Allow yourself to feel the peace of that. Because the other element to divine timing that we often overlook because our egos get in the way is divine timing means that you can rest and relax and allow yourself to heal and not worry about how long it's going to take. Spirit knows how long it's going to take. And they've got that under control. That's accounted for already. So all you have to do is just relax and sink into it and allow yourself to heal. Yeah? Hey, you could even go so far as to enjoy yourself. <laughs> why not? I mean, why not? <laughs> And honestly, the more you work towards enjoying yourself, the more you work towards feeling happy, feeling good, feeling content, and even feeling grateful, gratitude is really important here. But the more you work towards that, the easier it's going to be. And actually, the faster it'll happen. Why? Because you're not so worried about when it's going to come through. You're just so focused on the fact that you feel so damn good. It's like, whatever, man, whatever happens, happens. It'll come through when it's ready. And honestly, if it's here comes that proverb again. If it's truly meant for you, you can't fuck it up. You can't miss it. It will find you. It will come to you. You don't got to do anything else but just be. Because it's yours already. Anyway. Right? Yes, hunty. I'll drink to that. <laughs> mm. Do I have any chapstick anywhere? Hold on, my lips are chapped. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. I love this stuff. It's EOS. And it's gluten-free. And they even have organic ones. I live by this stuff. It's fantastic. Anyway, okay. All right, let's... um. Let's get some clarification here. I want to start with this. I'm going to start with the five of pentacles in reverse with the devil, the backside of the devil, and the four of cups. And I'm going to be using the, the, epic, the epic tarot just to get a little more clarity on this. Because a common theme that started coming through, I believe it was last week, was that we've reached the final chapter of this book. And now we're in the process of writing a whole new one. Yes. And this deck really depicts that very, very well. So I just want to get a little bit of, of a little clarity here for you. 
in what's really closing out for you. Maybe some things you might need to be aware of as this is closing out for you here. If some of you might still be in a little bit of this energy right now, just again, just some things you might need to be conscious of in the moment or just whatever other messages spirit has in terms of this energy for you. Okay. All right. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. Then we'll see what we've got. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Ooh. Interesting. I'm going to take the top three. One, two, three. Excellent. Ooh, excellent. Overall energy is the Empress. That's beautiful. Um, we have the, 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 the big message here is judgment, the King of Swords, and the Star. So this is definitely answering the call, all right? This is the wake-up call here, okay? And, and being in this King of Swords energy is very much being, being truthful and being honest with yourself and being like literally saying to yourself, all right, look, it's time to make a move and it's time to make amends, okay? This is a very mature energy. This is very, very good, all right? This King of Swords is being as objective as possible and is looking, things, looking at things from a place of what is going to serve my highest good and what's also going to serve the highest good of others. So there's definitely an energy of no longer enabling people to, at least from your point of view, no longer enabling people to um, engage in some of these energies that maybe you're, you're no longer resonating with, at least as far as you're involved that doesn't mean that they won't find others to to key key with them as long as they want but at least you're not doing it with them anymore right okay you have yeah look you have the seven of wands with the seven of swords five of cups um what i get with this is you're you're putting blockages uh barriers um um, um boundaries is I guess the best word for it, boundaries. And in some cases, in some extreme cases, yes, it's blockages and barriers between you and any sort of potential energy that would be um, deceptive because you're starting to realize how hurtful that deceptive energy, how detrimental that deceptive energy is. Five of cups here, okay? Beautiful. Moving forward, we do have the Eight of Cups that's crossing the Ten of Cups here. I do feel like some of you are in the process right now of figuring out what it is you need to walk away from. Oof, well, there's one. The Hierophant, wow, with the Lovers. Ooh, okay. Page of Cups and the... That's interesting. I turned it that way for a reason. But that's the Ten of Swords. And it's interesting, I turned the Ten of Swords so that it's reversed. Like I flipped it, I took the bottom of the card and I flipped it, and I normally don't do that. Normally I just take it from the side and flip it over, but this side, this time with this card, I flipped it from bottom up. And that reversed it. And that's a good thing, because it's also coupled with this Page of Cups in reverse. And this Page of Cups is a lack of emotional maturity. And that lack of emotional maturity was hurting you like for real you're leaving this behind and you're moving forward with an activation knight of wands an activation that's represented here by judgment okay beautiful energy and so now what you have is the hierophant and the lovers so this is the energy that you're walking that uh, this kind of it, it, interesting because it is the energy that you're walking away from, but only to a certain degree. Because as I was saying that, as I was talking about this Ten of Cups here, that's kind of being crossed by the Eight of Eight of Cups. It's like it's like you're you're figuring out how to walk away from something in order in order to walk towards greater emotional fulfillment with the Ten of Cups. 
okay and as i was saying that i was like i wonder what you're trying to walk away from i turned the hierophant over the hierophant in this case what you're walking away from is a sense of conformity okay again i'm going to say this as many times as i can i want you guys to understand that the hierophant energy is not always bad but it does have a negative side and that negative side is conformity mind control um indoctrination it can represent extreme elements of the patriarchy that kind of thing which is kind of a uh running rampant in our society right now but that's what we're moving away from but the other thing that's coming through with the hierophant energy is commitment the lovers you're walking away from some sort of conformity in order to be with the one that you love or in order to be in a in a situation or a circumstance in which you can find a committed partner that you can commit a commit to a partner that's for some of you for others of you this lover's energy is the union of masculine and feminine within you i'm getting an energy of walking away from some sort of conformity and indoctrination in order for you to be a full and complete version of yourself in order to be fully and truly authentic and the other thing that i'm getting with this hierophant energy is almost as if the hierophant is like looking at you very proud why because you've learned the lesson you've learned the lesson and now you're moving forward to bigger and better things represented by the high priestess right here which we're going to get into okay wow you guys that's quite beauty mess okay so let's do that just gonna shift over here and now i'm gonna use this other deck here it's a typical rider weight deck i did get it it was sent in by a viewer i actually really like it so I'm going to use it. And I just want to look a little more into the energies here. The star, the high priestess, strength, six of pentacles, and four of swords. Yes? Okay. Let's see. Let me give this three shuffles here. Let's look a little deeper into what this energy represents for you. I'm already kind of feeling a Ten of Cups vibe from this, which makes sense because that's what we were just talking about. You're leaving, you've, you've left, you're moving forward from the, the lesson of the Hierophant. And it's interesting because the Hierophant, through its trials and tribulations, whatever the Hierophant energy represents for you, it helped you to find that sense of commitment within, what's this? Oh, the Knight of Pentacles, interesting. It helped you find that sense, ooh, and judgment here. Okay, good. It helped you find that sense of commitment within in order to find that marriage of masculine and feminine within you, which is then helping you to align with an external partner. I'm going to give this one last shuffle. And so now you're graduating to the lessons of the high priestess, which is the higher wisdom. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the overall energy here with the empress of the other deck is about a, a birthing a new cycle. Okay. Beautiful. Last shuffle here. All right. I wanted to see what's underneath the deck. The eight of cups. The Eight of Cups, y'all, is underneath the deck at this point. I'm going to shuffle it. There's going to be something else under there. But hello, walking away, walking to bigger and better things. These Eight Cups are fully stacked, and it's not quite everything that you want. It's not the full fulfillment that you want. And what could you potentially be doing? Walking away to go find those last two cups here to complete your Ten. I told you I'm feeling this Ten of Cups energy in this, okay? All right, here we go. Shit, there's the Hierophant again. Okay, and we're going to take... Wow, oof. Okay, and we're going to take the top three. The Ace of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands, with the Six of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Okay. Let's see what popped out. We have the Hierophant with the Devil, the Eight of Wands, Two of Pentacles, Six of Swords, and the Ten of Swords. Okay.
This is good though, you guys. This is very good. So there's a sense of having the clear and open air. Okay. To move away. Clear and open space. There's, I'm also feeling communication here. Okay. So there might be some conversations that some of you may, meet, may need to have to set the record straight. Um, to clear the way. To clear the space for you to move forward with this Eight of Wands, Devil, and the Hierophant. Um, but also there's a sense of bringing balance into your life and moving away from rough waters into calmer waters as this cycle is done. Ten of Swords. And whatever and whatever direction you are moving in, you see how these two are these two individuals in the Six of Swords is moving away. They're moving away from the sorry, they're moving away from the Ten of Swords here, right? Towards greater physical balance. Two of Pentacles. Okay? Excellent. Ace of Swords, Four of Pentacles, Knight of Wands. This is the energy of the clarity, having the clarity to release yourself from some things that you have been moving away from. Or I'm sorry, that you have been holding on to and are being activated. Okay, the Knight of Wands energy to me is very much an activation. It's a light worker card. It's a it's a card, it's an energy of someone being inspired to move forward in a new direction. And now that you're cutting the ties of whatever this Four of Pentacles energy is for you, whatever it is you've been holding on to, whether that be possessions, ways of life, certain circumstances, certain environments, whatnot, whatever, whatever you've been holding on to dear life for security reasons, whatever you have, whatever you're, I'm sorry, whatever you're cutting away or releasing that you have been holding on to for dear life, for, for, for security reasons, is giving you the clear open air and energy to move forward with this activation that you're being called towards yes making sense and it's all in service oh shit yes there's judgment right there it's all in service of recipro reciprocity but you know what I'm also getting with this Six of Pentacles, especially since we are moving from this Five of Pentacles right here that has been, that came out in reverse in the first pull, right? This Six of Pentacles, <laughs> I just realized I had fuzzies. I still, I have fuzzies on my beard from my scarf. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, but this Six of Pentacles is also giving me an energy of, yes, it's reciprocity. It's the balance between give and take. It's balanced, harmonious, and healthy relationships. But it's also you realizing that you do, in fact, deserve to be loved. You do deserve to receive love. It's you recognizing that you do, in fact, deserve this. You deserve to be happy. You have a right to be happy. And you have a right to be happy in exactly the way you deem best for your life in exactly the way you deem fit you see fit for you not the way other people tell you to be happy you're going to be happy because it's what you want not what others want for you and you absolutely are in an energy right now of recognizing that you are worthy of this that you do deserve this okay Yeah, the Knight of Swords just popped out in the other deck as I was, as I was shifting it. And then also this Ace of Swords here is definitely giving me an energy of communication. So I do really feel like there are some, there are some, there are some truths that you need. I'm hearing there are some truths that you need to admit to yourself, but also there are some truths that you need to admit to some others. There's communication that's needed here. If there is someone that you need, that you've been wanting to talk to, that you've been wanting to communicate with, that you've been wanting to reconnect with, just speak up. Just do it. What literally, guys, literally, what's the worst that could happen? For of you speaking your truth, what absolutely is the worst that could happen? First of all, you're not going to die. You're definitely not going to die. And then there are some of you out there that are saying, well, what if someone like makes an attempt on my life? They made an attempt, but they were not successful. They will not be successful because the energy of our planet, the energy that we're moving into right now will not facilitate that any longer. And also keep in mind that if someone is making an attempt on your life because you are speaking your truth, imagine their karma. Okay. But also... Let's not go that extreme. Let's say, what is the absolute worst that could happen? You lose something. You lose a job. You lose a, a, a friendship. You lose, 
I don't know. Whatever you lose, though, is no longer necessary for your life and is most likely one of the strongest elements that has been keeping you from receiving this happiness to begin with, was keeping you from aligning with this happiness to begin with. So really, What's the worst that could happen? And okay, so now if you, you're, you're, you're feeling inclined to speak up to someone, to communicate some sort of truth with someone, tell someone, maybe even tell someone how you truly feel. If they reject you, all right. I mean, yeah, sure, that might, be, that might sting a little. That might, be, uh, that might bruise your ego a little bit. But ultimately, then that person just wasn't right for you. Rejection is God's protection. And if you look at it that way, Think about it. If you've now been rejected and you're moving forward, you now have the clear and open space, eight of wands, to bring in that person that really does align with you, that really is meant for you. Now, in terms of maybe a counterpart situation, if you still feel this connection and as days go on, more and more, you're feeling more and more inclined to communicate with this person, to open up with this person, to, to reconnect with this person. Chances are they're not going to reject you. But again, there is only one way to find out. And really, Spirit is saying here, you've got to communicate. You've got to. Speak up. Just say it. Let it out. Ace of Swords, Eight of Wands. Communicate. Yes? Communication is key here. That's what they're saying. Alrighty. Let's close out this message with your Oracle Guidance. We're going to go with the Crystal Mandala today. shee doo boop doo boop All right. Let's see what we've got. One last shuffle for the collective. And then we will see what our Oracle guidance is today. There it is. Oh, wow, there's two. Okay. We have card number 13, which is a card of death and transformation, or a number, excuse me, of death and transformation. Archangel Adnachiel and Tiger's Eye. Tiger Spirit Rises. It's a beautiful card. I love that. It's gorgeous. And then we also have card number 42, Goddess Hecate and Mika, Crossroad of Destiny. Beautiful. We're going to start with 13. Here we go. Tiger Spirit Rises. We bring you the gift of the Tiger Spirit Rising. You are being empowered with a truth more potent than fear. Your spirit is rapidly expanding beyond what opinion and logic can contain. It needs to be free to run wild with divine grace in the world. If you, I'm oh, sorry, your life, your destiny, your divine fulfillment requires that you have the courage to roar for love, to refuse to be put down, to respect yourself, and to let your untamed loving heart be free. Your spirit creates a field of divine electricity through your body and mind that can liberate others from conformity and social conditioning, allowing them to break away from systems based in control and fear. As your tiger spirit rises, you excite and empower the tiger spirit in others to rise above conditioning as they discover the wild divine spirit being they are in truth. Excellent. Oh my god, that's so awesome. And then finally, we have card 42. Crossroads of Destiny. We bring you the empowerment of the Crossroad of Destiny. 
you are at a pivotal point on your life journey. This may be obvious to you with a potentially life-changing decision before you, or you may not realize the impact that an apparently insignificant choice is going to have on your future. Either way, you are at a point where you can leave the past behind and chart your course for a new adventurous chapter to begin in your life. This is not something you need to be frightened of. It is a sign you are progressing on your path. The crossroad of destiny happens when you have mastered a cycle in your life and a new cycle is before you. It is an opportunity that you can take best advantage of by listening to your heart. Gorgeous. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. Woohoo.